Throughout history, rural communities have nurtured deep relationships with the soil. People worshipped deities that they connected not only to fertility in livestock and women, but also to soil productivity. After all, the soil provided most of their food. Kama kama samani samani wakati wa baba yangu kuwa bado iko mzima. Kama tunalima, mimi inakuwa mfupi tunawaacha kulima mwaka mmoja au mbili. Hatulimi. Sasa tunaiwacha nyakaa. Baadaye tunakuja tunalima kama kama mpya. Hapo tunafuna. With the rapidly growing population Farmers no longer leave the land fallow and grow crops on the same land year after year. Under such continuous use, soil fertility declines if nutrients removed in crop products are not returned. Uncontrolled surface water runoff further aggravates the situation by washing away fertile soil. As land becomes less productive, farmers struggle to produce the food fiber and fuel they need from the 1960s to the 1980s it was thought fertilizer alone would be enough to sustain crop yields in the 1980s the emphasis shifted to the use of crop residues and animal manure over the past two decades and as scientific evidence grew Research has shown the importance of combining organic resources, mineral fertilizer, and improved varieties in ways that are adapted to local conditions. This is what is meant by integrated soil fertility management. An important principle in integrated soil fertility management is to recognize that soil fertility varies greatly between countries and farms. It even varies between fields within a particular farm. So crops grown on different soils respond differently to mineral and organic fertilizer. On soils that are responsive to fertilizers, Large gains can be expected with improved varieties and fertilizer application. By contrast, on poor, less responsive soils, the use of fertilizers and improved varieties only provides a good return if combined with other investments in soil fertility. Clearly, one needs to assess the variability in soil fertility before advising farmers on which options they could best try out. A major effort is presently underway to produce soil maps of sub-Saharan Africa to help research and extension workers formulate advice that is better adapted to local conditions. Yeah, if you don't know what the limiting factor is at the site, then uh, you can waste a lot of money. Uh, if a farmer buys fertilizers, for example, which are very expensive, and the nutrients, the elements he's applying are not the limiting ones, then he's going to lose his money on those fertilizers. So any information we can provide to give better ad advice on what are the likely limiting factors uh, can save them a lot of money uh, and, and steer them towards testing the right kind of um, inputs uh, for, the, for the constraints we expect in those areas. Integrated soil fertility management merges scientific with local knowledge and aims at optimal use of available resources. Exploring which practices make most sense clearly depends on farmers' assets, such as capital and labor. 
Management choices also differ for a farmer growing food to feed his family and a farmer growing crops to sell to the market. To accommodate such differences in soils and farmers' assets, Integrated Soil Fertility Management combines four components or pillars. Mineral fertilizer, organic resources, improved varieties, and adaptation to the local context. Across Africa, farmers have found clever ways to apply these pillars. Pillar number one is the use of mineral fertilizer. Fertilizers provide a source of plant nutrients that are readily available for plants to use. However, fertilizers are more expensive in Africa than anywhere else in the world. Challenges in importing fertilizers and transporting them over the potholed roads makes them not only expensive, but also not available to farmers at the right time. In fact, fertilizer use in Africa is the lowest in the world. Whereas farmers in Europe, America and parts of Asia use more than 200 kilograms per hectare, farmers in Africa apply on average only 8 kilograms per hectare. To address poor soil fertility with limited means, farmers in Niger learned to apply microdoses to their sorghum and millet. Microdosing consists of applying small quantities of nutrients that the plants need to each planting hole or stand. <laughs> amma yanzu dangace da wannan sabon sauƙi da suka zo wanda aka zo aka gwada mu wanda ake taki ga naka yanzu da kilo 20 ko kilo 30 wannan da su ne sai ka ji ka ekaka kuma ka samu haki masu yawa microdosing gives spectacular results especially when farmers combine it with improved striga resistant varieties when they add small amounts of compost to the planting pit and make tied ridges to conserve water. In irrigated rice, the story is slightly different, as here we witness a move from excessive towards less fertilizer use. When urea is surface broadcast into the rice field flood water, it dissolves easily, and about two out of every three bags applied are lost to the crop. With urea supergranules, farmers use only half the amount of fertilizer and increase their rice yield by up to a ton. They further boost their yield by adding organic matter and transplanting in lines. So when you apply the organic matter in form of manure, you improve the nutrient retention and supplying capacity of soil, and particularly phosphorus. And phosphorus is known to stimulate root growth. And this reduces the transplanting shock of the plant after transplanting and increase the nutrient uptake by the plants. Farmers have limited means to buy fertilizers, so targeting fertilizer to parts of the cropping system where they get the biggest profit is crucial. Pillar number two is the use of organic resources, such as crop residues, green manure, animal manure, and compost. 
Organic materials contain smaller amounts of nutrients than mineral fertilizers, but also contribute to crop growth in other ways. They improve soil moisture retention, soil structure, as well as soil chemical properties, which in turn affect nutrient availability, root growth, and of course, crop growth. Crop residues from legume plants contain more nitrogen compared with residues from cereal crops. To enhance the development of root nodules that help the plant fix nitrogen from the air, legume crops like beans and soybeans may require inoculation with specific strains of bacteria. Foresighted agro-dealers have started to sell such inoculum in small bags. Depending on the context, farmers capture nitrogen in different ways. In Niger, animals are tethered overnight on the field. This returns manure and urine to the soil, both of which are rich in nitrogen. <laughs> However, most farmers only have a few animals of their own and do not have any relationship with herders. In western Kenya, farmers like Jennifer Chalamba keep goats in raised slatted pens so that urine and dung can be collected and used to enrich their compost. Jennifer goes through even greater efforts to improve the quality of her compost by also adding rock phosphate. <laughs> Pillar number three is the use of improved varieties. Improving soil fertility with mineral fertilizer and organic resources makes more sense if crops are healthy and when responsive varieties are grown. Hybrid maize varieties produce larger yields than local varieties and respond well to improvements in soil fertility. Some of the popular hybrids are also resistant to the parasitic weed Striga and to the maize mosaic virus, and they tolerate drought better. Market-orientated farmers in Kenya recognize the benefits of such improved varieties and readily turn to their local seed supplier. This partly explains why seed companies here have increased from a mere 18 in 1996 to 73 in 2010. In many places, farmers now combine improved maize varieties with organic matter management, fertilizer application, and at times a legume crop. To identify which soybean varieties grow best on their soils, suit their taste and that of the market, many farmer groups have teamed up. A 
In Tanzania, farmer field schools evaluate improved sorghum varieties in combination with soil fertility management and water conservation practices. The results were both convincing and motivating. This brings us to pillar number four, local adaptation. Maximum yield is not all that matters. Farmers have different assets and this determines how they can apply each of the pillars. Local adaptation also implies that to improve the response to integrated soil fertility management, farmers must consider good agricultural practices and sustainable land and water management. Certain crops need to be treated against pests and diseases. Failing to do so will result in an unhealthy crop that will use nutrients and water inefficiently. On sloping lands, erosion control measures help to minimize losses of fertile topsoil and applied fertilizers due to uncontrolled surface water runoff. Intercropping may provide the farmer with larger crop yields compared with growing sole crops and enable soil fertility to be restored at the same time. In the Democratic Republic of Congo, farmers traditionally plant cassava at random distances in between beans. The introduction of a new cropping pattern proved revolutionary in its own right. Leo tunapata ya kupanda maharagi na mihogo kumustari. Ni kusema turu ya pili tunaweza vuna ya kwanza kisha ile mihogo na ile mayani ya maharagi tasaidia ile mihogo mbolea yingine na saidia ile tulitia mbulongo. Eh kisha tunatia maharagi turu ya pili na ile mihogo iko vile ndio maana tulikamata distance ya kabambe. The variety is resistant to the cassava mosaic virus improved soya bean varieties, along with the application of compost and well-placed small amounts of mineral fertilizer, all contributed to the success. In Burundi, with an increase of the world coffee price, farmers started to combine organic and mineral fertilizer. They ensured in another way that only the crop consumed the nutrients supplied. Shashobora kuba garantu harimwe gusa mu mwaka cyane nk'uburabona aho mariye gushiramwe umwavu w'ikirundi nashimbona ko hari ikintu cyiyongere hanyuma maze gushiramwe none ho ikirundi wongereke ko wangire bica birarunkishiritswe. Nahandi zahora ziteba nk'amura ngo gite safari zitana nabo buhari nico bamura kabi kobera ayo masa bikacabwo nyene zihishira n'ingoka. Mulch has proven its benefits to suppress weeds, conserve soil moisture, and reduce surface water runoff. In coffee monocrops, banana crop residues often serve as mulch, but its transport is laborious and decreases the soil fertility of the banana plots. Farmers in Uganda, and more recently also in some areas of Burundi and Rwanda, started intercropping coffee with banana to provide on-site mulch and a secure year-round source of income. While we visited places as diverse as the semi-arid tropics in West Africa, and the more humid highlands of Central Africa, three things have become apparent. First, soils differ between countries, between farms, and even within farms. Second, integrated soil fertility management 
means combining mineral fertilizer, organic resources, and improved varieties, while taking into account these differences in soils. Third, what is most appropriate for farmers depends not only on their environment, but also on their resources and objectives. To climb the ladder of integrated soil fertility management, it is crucial to continuously engage with farmers and keep their realities at heart.